Welcome back to Dispatches. One of the most biologically diverse parks on the planet, the Virunga Park, is also one of the most threatened by human activity. Deforestation, climate change, poachers, and an ongoing civil war have made tourism almost impossible in the area. Now a group of aid workers are setting out through the Virunga to visit the Renzoris, a glacial mountain range bordering Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. This group of adventurers wants to become the first people to ski in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and along the way, they hope to bring attention to this beautiful, ecologically vital, and profoundly troubled corner of the world. This is the story of an adventure in the Renzori Mountains of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. It ends with a first ski descent down the Congolese side of Stanley Glacier, Africa's forgotten ice field. But it begins 10 days earlier in a handyman shop in Kigali, Rwanda. Three pairs of skis bargain for free on Craigslist in Brooklyn, New York, now destined for the jungles and snowfields of Central Africa. But first, they need some alterations. The bindings are retrofitted so that the skis will fit onto our regular hiking boots and mountaineering boots. Look at how many. <laughs> I know. Look at that. I know. Swiss cheese skis. I would say that the conditions for skiing in the Congo are comparable to the quality of skis that we brought up the mountain. I was invited on the Renzori trip either one or two years ago, and I couldn't come. Uh, and this time, I quit my job and just decided I was coming. Hey, you know what we need? We need to build a roof rack. It's harder than it looks. That's to make it look, oh my god. That one needs some work. That one's good, 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 good. The whole aspect of you know skis going th across the border from Rwanda into the DRC and people's impressions of you know what are these things? And uh, I asked uh, one of the porters, um, what, what do you call a ski in Swahili? He's like, we really don't have a word for that. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a little bit more of an adventure than I probably originally planned on. It's almost impossible to give a, a quick explanation for what drives conflict in the Congo, but I would say that one of the main issues is the fact that there's no solid functioning army in the DRC, and so that just leads to a proliferation of, of these groups. They perpetuate violence to perpetuate their own existence. We'd learn of the rebel activity when we got to Goma. If it was too dangerous, we'd be forced to turn back. In the meantime, we'd travel west through Rwanda on the same roads that one million refugees took when they fled the country during the 1994 genocide. We arrive at the Goma airport for a flight that would take us to Beni in the North Kivu province, the closest airstrip to the Renzori Mountains. After several hours of negotiating our bribes, we board the plane. This airline, like all Congolese airlines, is blacklisted. Its safety record is so bad, it's not allowed to fly to other countries. We arrive in Beni and organize the taxis that will take us 40 miles to the foothills of the Renzori Mountains. Trying to negotiate prices, trying to, there's like a barrier we gotta stop at, we're trying to figure that out. At last, the mountains are in sight. We settle up with our moto drivers, make camp, and tomorrow, we will go to the village market for our final provisions. Hey, Dan, do you have another 20? This one's ripped. We want cauliflower tonight. Vegetables, fruit, eggs, salt, machetes, a goat, two chickens, 
These are among the supplies we pack into a Unimog truck and drive to where the dirt road ends, and we pick up what appears to be a cattle trail that leads us into the foothills. Iko. Aliana Mwen. Iko. Mbilika. Oweim. Aselme. Sita. Caberal. Saba. Our porters. These men are normally farmers and herdsmen. For the next eight days, they will be our tenacious support team. Without them, this trip would not be possible. Congo Ski Club! Congo! <laughs> The rifle is for the rebels. The braconier hunters. And the poachers. That's a good point. There's a lot of poachers in Virunga Forest. C'est dangereux votre ton travail, hein? Oui. Chaque année, il y a le, 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 le ranger qui est mort. Oui. N'est-ce pas? Oui. Every year they lose more than one. Every year they lose many. The rainforest of the Congo Basin, Virunga National Park, one of the most biodiverse places on Earth. That chimbal cheese is not habituated. Okay. They fear the presence of human. It is earthworm. Ugh. I imagine there's some fishermen in the States that would like to get their hands oh, on this. <laughs> Young chameleon. Oh, he's going into the ledge, dude. He's going in. The Congo Ski Club continues their ascent to the Renzori's when Dispatches returns. Welcome back to Dispatches. We're following the Congo Ski Club, a group of aid workers who are seeking to become the first people to ski some of Africa's highest peaks. They've set their sights on the glacial fields of the Renzori's, a mountain range that stands higher than the Sierra Nevadas, the Rocky Mountains, and even the Alps. The expedition is a serious challenge, but the extreme elevation isn't the only obstacle standing in their way. Day three of our expedition to be the first people to ski the Congo. We enter the cloud forest, nearly impassable through monster ferns and over the gnarled roots of strange cypress-like trees. Still straight down. <laughs> Still straight down. Chaque année, vous avez combien de touristes? The people who are trying to bring in tourists or who are trying to bring in hikers and trying to bring in skiers, they have the unfortunate uh, luck of being located in a really bad neighborhood. But, but, you know, on our trip, we had a fantastic time. We had no problems with any, to any degree with insecurity. The next morning, we leave camp, and soon we're above the tree line. At 10,000 feet, we enter a sort of Jurassic-looking landscape with grotesque plants such as the lobolia and the giant ground cell. The ecosystem here in the Renzori's is like no place on Earth. Before long, a wall of mountains stands before us. We arrive at our final camp, before reaching the glaciers. Asante. Felicitations. Merci. 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 Okay. Merci. No matter how tired we are, these porters are humping all of our gear. Here we are, complaining about how difficult it is. Right now, divvying up the food, making sure that uh, we have enough to survive the next three days on the glacier. At daybreak, the weather looks promising. We prepare for what will be the longest day. We're going to end up on the other side of this high point behind us. That's where our glacier is. But we got to go down before we go up today. So that's kind of a bummer. We begin a precarious 50-meter climb around a vertical rock face that drops hundreds of feet below. We're trusting our lives on the strength of our fingers and an old nylon rope that was put here when the country was still called Zaire. We're now 
on the Moraini Valley, the last valley before the glaciers there. You can see the Alexandra Glacier behind me. We're at the third of the glacier lakes, Lac Gris. And then we're gonna actually start going up this valley. It's all used to be glaciers, so it's really smooth, slippery rock. And where this cloud is descending, there is uh, a main glacier coming down that's gonna lead us to the Stanley Plateau where we're gonna go up and make camp tonight. Luigi had described this as a valley, but that was being a bit too kind. It's a scramble up loose, steep terrain, hand over hand over wet rock. The elevation was finally getting to some of us. At last, we arrive at the base of the glacier. This is as far as the porters will go. Merci, à Santisana. Vendred vous quelque Les autres vendredi matin. Hey Alexi, Alexi. 7h30, hein? Ça va, ça va. Isaac aussi quelque chose. Quelque chose, Isaac? Quelque chose, la montagne. OK. Isaac never showed up. The temperature is well below freezing. There's almost no visibility, and icy winds threaten to blow us off the mountain. We spend most of the day in our sleeping bags. Stuck in fog in the Renzori Mountains. We're having fun. We're having fun. And we got a good spirits. We finally set out on the plateau, looking for potential ski runs, or rather crevasses that would prevent us from skiing altogether. Just before dark, the sky is clear, and we get our first view of the Renzori Massif. The next morning, another day in the clouds, we go in search of more potential ski runs. Like once before, we have to climb down before we can climb up. We take a detour to arrive at the summit of Margarita Peak which marks the border between Congo and Uganda. It is the third highest mountain in Africa. Congo Ski Club! We still have to go skiing. Yeah, <laughs> let's go skiing. Dan, when's the last time you were skiing? Um, actually, to be honest, this is my first time skiing. <laughs> Virunga is, is one of the most biodiverse parks in the world, and it's really under threat uh, with all the insecurity um, that's happening. And the park managers are doing a, a really good job um, under very difficult circumstances in at least keeping that park together. A trip like the one we've done can help to highlight some of the amazing things people can do in that park. I think that the Congo is a meilleur et qui, et qui on pourra envier. Nous restons toujours pauvres à cause des guerres, à cause des bandits. C'est pourquoi, si vous venez avec les étrangers, nous félicitons. Ces jours-là, nous mangeons bien. Notre femme félicite. Quand nous viendrons ici à Renzori, nous restons en bonne vie. The future of the Congo remains uncertain. If the country stabilizes, an increase in tourism will no doubt improve the lives of the people who live here. Until then, there are moraine valleys left to be explored, peaks to be climbed, and endless adventures to be had. A country known mostly for its war and strife. But this too is the Congo. For more information on these and other dispatch features, log on to OutsideTelevision.com and follow the conversation on our Facebook and Twitter pages. For all of us here at Outside Television, I'm Nick Heil. 
Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Dispatches. We hope to see you next time.